Welcome to the first video of theme number two, economic transformations. Over the course of this theme, we're going to talk about everything from how America went from being a kind of an agrarian society where we grew our own crops and we made our own food and we made our own way in life, all the way to the economic superpower that we are today. And when we talk about this unit, we really want to talk about at its core is immigration. And that's the first video we're going to talk about today is how did America become this melting pot that we know it today, where we have many different races and cultures and belief systems all kind of melted together to become one kind of identifiable American culture. And so that's the first part of the video that we're going to talk about today. In your notes, you need to list this as immigration and nativism. And this picture, I think, sums up uh, nativism really well. As you can see here, it's these flood of immigrants coming in and Uncle Sam looking over it, almost disproving, uh, 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 unapprovingly. But kind of one of the one of the things I want you to really remember is, is as the physical shape of the United States changed, as we grew bigger and we brought in things, uh, uh, state new states like Alaska and Texas and 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 California. So did its people and its culture, and it was really influenced by the Industrial Revolution. Um, more immigrants poured into the country than ever before, and those already here began to really try to secure more rights for themselves. And as these millions of, of people immigrated to the United States in, in the mid-1800s, they often traveled in what was known as steerage, or the lowest class on a ship. And this journey was really tough, but in spite of that, they still made the conditions. Oftentimes in steerage, it would be cold, it would be wet, maybe you'd have little food, I mean, it might be rat infested, maybe sleeping on a, on a straw mattress to get here, but, but they made those sacrifices to move to this country in a better life. One group in particular are the Irish, and many Irish moved to, uh, move, moved to the United States and then they crossed the Atlantic due to what was known as the Irish Potato Famine in the mid-1840s. Mostly, they were poor and uneducated, and they settled in northeastern cities to work as laborers and domestics. So um, New York, Boston, they have large Irish populations even to this day. And they preferred this work over the famine, which you know meant that they didn't have any food, and then the anti-Catholic persecution um, that was going on in Great Britain at the time. Now, driven out uh, by an 1848 rev revolution in their homeland and general poverty, Germans made up another significant percentage of the U.S. immigrants in the mid-19th century. Um, Germans tended to settle in the Midwest, where they found uh, inexpensive land and opportunity to farm. So that would be parts of like Indiana, uh, uh, Ohio, Pennsylvania, for instance. Um, and most large groups of immigrants, uh, and probably the, 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 the largest group of all immigrants, were the Scandinavians. And they tended to head for the North, uh, northern Midwest and the Chinese who immigrated across the Pacific. Uh, they went to California. So with all this flood of immigration, these people coming from China, from, the, from Scandinavia, from Germany, from Ireland, uh, Ireland um, many Americans became afraid that these new rivals would take over their jobs and lower pay. And so those who opposed immigration became known as nativists. And the nativist politics soared in popularity. Um, in 1849, a secret society of nativists founded the American Party. And though they were often called the Know Nothing Party, because they refused to speak about the details of their organization. Um, the Know Nothings were anti-Catholic and supported longer waiting periods for naturalization and a ban on foreign natives holding public office. Within a few years, however, the party fell apart and over disagreements about slavery. So it didn't really matter if you were an immigrant or if you were a native-born American. If you lived in a city at this time, city life really proved challenging for many immigrants. Most cities lacked adequate sewer systems, um, police and fire departments, and even housing. And for a population boom, um, that was kind of growing out of control, it really created a, a, a rough situation in many cities. Immigrants in particular tended to live in crowded tenement apartment buildings. Um, these places were, were centers where um, they were tightly packed in and disease often spread pretty rapidly. Others, however, did prosper as middle class business owners and were able to kind of pull themselves out of, out of these, these conditions. But um, just remember that a tenement apartment is a low-rent, low-quality apartment where disease often spreads. So that's it. You survived your first video of uh, theme number two, economic transformations. Um, you need to have these, all of this stuff in, in your notes. So if you missed anything, I encourage you to go back and rewatch the video again. It is pretty short, I believe. 
hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, you do have one piece of homework that goes along with this video. I need you to come up with two, that's two, potential essay questions over the material we just covered. You can write those at the bottom of your notes underneath all the notes you just took. Um, please have them in there. We'll use them and talk about them tomorrow in class. Um, and, and other than that, that's it. Have a great rest of your day. Congratulations. You're through video number one. And I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye, everybody.